friends, what's up? Welcome back to Rouse Rising. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Katie and on this channel I share with you all about holistic homemaking, lifestyle, and parenting. It's all about meal prep, nourishing meal prep, how you can feed your family the best foods for the least amount of money. So if you're into all of that, be sure that you click the subscribe button. I would love to have you part of my Rouse Rising family here. Today we are gonna be focusing on restocking the pantry. This right here is an extension of my kitchen. It is also my laundry room, my utility room, my appliance room, my bread machine room. And I have some more cabinets over here that have food and various other items in them. Uh, then right here we've got some of our larger electric cookers, pressure cookers, extra coffee pot, things like that, blender. Back here, this is going to get a bit of a change, but right here I have my manual pasta roller. I haven't gotten one for my KitchenAid yet, but this one will work just fine. It is a manual one. It was $8 at the thrift store. Go check your thrift stores for your manual pasta machines. And then right here, I've got some Durham grain that we are going to be grinding into flour and making our own pasta with. We have a big bag of sugar that I need to deal with. And so I'm going to get all of that into my five gallon buckets. I ran to the store into town and I was looking for lids. I found some more Gamma Seal lids at my local farm store. It's called Grange Co-op. So if you're local to me or if you're in Oregon or in the Pacific Northwest at your Grange Co-op, you can find your Gamma Seal lids. They were a little bit more pricey there than on Amazon, but I would rather buy from them. I also got the plain white bucket lids, and we're going to use these plain white bucket lids on some buckets that just have bags of other types of food in them, that have bags of grain or bags of rice or bags of sugar. Uh, and then we're just going to put that on for now until I get some more Gamma Seal lids. We're, we're all working with a budget here. so. Uh, I did grab six of these Gamma Seal lids. They were $14. They were a little bit more expensive buying them individually from the farm store than they would have been if I bought a 12 pack on Amazon. But I'm eager to get all this stuff stored and put away and out of this area so that I can free this area up for all of my food preps and all of the stuff that's going to be going on uh, here soon. So hang out with me while I restock and refill my whole pantry. We are going to be refilling glass jars and we might take this over to my kitchen. But for right now, I'm going to start right here and get all of my bulk things taken care of in this area. So I've got these large 50 pound and 25 pound bags of food over here. And the first one I have is a 50 pound bag of sugar. And a lot of people ask me how much space does a bag of sugar or a bag of oats or a bag of flour take up? And this 50 gallon bag of flour is going to take up about seven and a half gallons of space. So first I'm gonna fill up this five gallon bucket and then I'm gonna fill up a two gallon bucket and then I'm gonna fill up a couple of mason jars with sugar. So you're gonna see it takes about a minimum of a seven gallon storage space for this and then your sugar jar, the one that you're gonna be keeping in your kitchen ca uh, cabinet or keeping out on your counter. So for me, that is a mason jar, and then I use a smaller mason jar to serve up sugar for my daily bread and different things like that for different recipes. So I'm shaking it down in this two-gallon uh, storage container, and this two-gallon bucket I ordered from Azure Standard, as well as these Gamma Seal lids for the two-gallon buckets. Those also came from Azure Standard, so I will link those down below in this video's description, along with a link to Amazon for the five gallon bucket lids. Uh, so that way you can and have options. We're just gonna finish this off in this last little pint and a half mason jar that I'm gonna keep on my countertop uh, for, you know, tabletop serving. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, you so strong. So now we're going to have to fill up all of our other stuff. Will these fit? Will the black lentils fit? Probably not. Mm -hmm. 
Into this two gallon bucket, I'm just gonna put my leftover black beluga lentils and my broccoli sprouting seeds, and I'm just gonna seal this up to protect those. It's just kind of an odds and ends lentils and seeds bucket. Yes. Hello. All right, we're gonna do the hard red winter berries. We're gonna fill this bucket up. As I'm doing this, I'm also trying to keep everything organized and I was trying to think of a color coding system for my bucket lid. What I ended up deciding to do was just all of my different wheat buckets were going to have black lids and then my large bucket of sugar is going to have the red lid. Uh, probably a large bucket of salt is going to have the other red lid and then we'll have things that are not uh, flower green related as far as wheat berries and stuff are going to have the green lids that I have on those other buckets. Can I get the Put soft white wheat in here. You going to help me, Bobo? I like these one gallon glass jars for storing my grains, the ones that I'm going to be accessing daily or every week even. And this just makes it simple and easy as well as a pretty way to store all of my grains that are going to be out in the open on these exposed shelves or on my countertop. And I recently moved my grain mill into the kitchen so now I will be keeping some of my more frequently used grains on the counter by my grain mill in the kitchen. You guys, if you don't have any uh, solar lights yet, you want to get yourself some solar lights in case of a power outage. You're going to need some lights. I picked these up for under 20 bucks. It's a six pack, four to five feet suggested spacing. So each one of us could have one of those. Uh, and then we also have headlamps and some other things. So um, you just want to have a variety of ways to have light in the evenings. These are cannellini beans or cannelli beans. Hmm. How do you say it? Cannelli beans? And I've actually already canned some of these up. I already broke into that bag and used some of it. And they are delicious. We've just been eating them plain, but you can also have them in soup. And next I am filling up this rye flakes, this jar of rye flakes. And then we're also going to be doing the nine grain flakes. And both of those are five pound bags that I'm trying to squeeze into these one gallon jars, but it's too much. So I'm just gonna roll up those bags and stick them in an extra two gallon container. And that's what I do so that when I need to refill, I'll just tap back into those bags and they're in a bug proof container until I get to them again. Then right here, this is the Durham wheat. This is a 25 pound bag. And so you are gonna see how a 25 pound bag of wheat berries fits into a five gallon container. So if you were to have a 50 gallon bag, you would need a minimum of two five gallon containers for that. And I just cut the description, the nutritional information for the Durham wheat berries and the cooking instructions into the bucket. And here you see me demonstrating how I put the gamma seal lids on. I remove the screwing top from the rim part of the lid and I just press that down. Some people use a mallet. I do not. I just press it down into place and then screw the lid back on. I can get pretty creative with where to store my five gallon buckets. I also have some out in the garage, but those are the ones that I access more frequently to refill my containers. And I do have some wheat flour that is already milled from the store still in my back stores. So I've decided that I need to start using that up. And for a few reasons, flour, once it is ground, goes bad quicker. So. Um, I need to use it up as well as when Aaron is home, I have found that there are a few times when I need to grind flour to make something and I can't because he's around and it really bothers his ears. So it's just easier for me to have some already milled flour 
right here we are getting all of our snacks restocked. I have let all the jars go completely empty for most of my whole foods and then I re I wash them first of all after each use and they just kind of accumulate on the countertop and then once I accumulate a whole bunch of empty jars I do a giant restock like I am doing for you here today and this happened over two days I started the night before in the utility room area in the pantry extension and you saw I did uh, all of the restocking over there and got rid of those big bags and got things out of the way so I could have my table back my prep area back there and then now we are restocking all of our jars and Azure was out of craisins this month the apple juice infused cranberries and so I'm using just regular craisins from the store because we love to snack on those so those are going in my half gallon jars that you see over there on the left. I've got raisins, two different types of raisins, and one type of craisin in there. And then in this plastic bin, I am refilling some all-purpose flour. Again, I just like to have some already milled on hand so that I can make those recipes on the weekends when Aaron's around and I don't have to break out the flour mill because I don't really like to grind an excess amount of flour to keep on hand. So I don't know why, I just, at this point in life, I feel like store-bought flour maybe lasts better than my fresh milled flour, but some people say you can store your fresh milled flour in the freezer and it will be just fine until you are ready to use it. I just haven't started doing that yet. So what you see me doing right here is refilling my countertop popcorn jar. This is what I keep on the countertop for the kids, but I'm actually thinking, hmm, I might, I might switch those around here in a little bit and change some of my jars to make it more convenient. But uh, right here we are refilling the rice and you're gonna see here in a minute how much a 50 pound bag of rice, what uh, containers you can fit a 50 pound bag of rice in. So you're gonna need essentially two five gallon buckets, but I'm just gonna make it work with the different containers that I have because I just want one five gallon bucket and then I'm gonna have the two gallon bucket and a couple of glass jars of rice. But I figured I would just go ahead and get rid of one of these bags that are that is taking up space in my uh, utility room. So that is why I'm just gonna go ahead and distribute this bag, this 50 pound bag of sushi rice between the containers that I have available for rice right now. So that is this two gallon container right here. And what I did not do was the rice on the bottom should have been put on the top because first in, first out. However, this two gallon bucket is gonna be used right after these glass jars get used up before the five gallon bucket gets tapped into. So this rice is not gonna go bad in this two gallon bucket because we're gonna get to it in the next couple of months. We eat quite a bit of rice. I would say this 50 pound bag is gonna last us four to six months and then we're gonna be refilling our regular plain rolled oats. These are our organic rolled oats, old fashioned rolled oats from Azure. And I just keep it in a half gallon mason jar. We go through about a half gallon mason jar of oats every other week. So that's been sitting empty for a while, but I have been um, more recently since this video was filmed, I've been using my rye, flakes and my nine grain flakes as well to make the kids and myself some oatmeal in the mornings. And I really like both of those uh, oatmeal type flakes. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised with the taste of the rye flakes and we did follow the cooking instructions. It was one part rye flakes to three parts water. And I let them cook for quite a while. And when I added them to the boiling water, I also chopped up a bunch of apples and added a bunch of cinnamon and just let the apples cook down with the rye oats and it was really yummy the kids didn't even know it was any different than the oatmeal and they ate it right up so right now i am refilling my real salt and there's going to be a 10 percent discount code down in this video's description rouse rising you can use that link and when you spend 30 dollars or more you get free shipping. It is a better deal than Amazon and it is a better deal than Azure Standard. So check that out. And then this is some coffee that I got from uh, Azure as well. And this is an organic dark roast 
a coffee and I am going to be vacuum sealing it into these mason jars. This is a 10 pound bag and if you guys saw my one of my previous videos where I had the dilemma of, oh my goodness, I ordered way too much coffee. How am I ever going to get through this before its expiration date? Well, it does expire next January in 2023. So I think I can get through 20 pounds of coffee by then. Maybe. If not, then we're going to have it vacuum sealed uh, to extend the shelf life a little bit longer. And I use my game saver back there with the mason tops vacuum sealer attachments for the wide mouth jar. It also comes with a regular mouth jar attachment. And what you see me doing right there is placing a mason lid upside down inside of the, uh, the air, the vacuum attachment, because that helps keep the lid that is being vacuum sealed centered on the jar correctly without it going wonky inside of the lid attachment. So that is a trick that I learned from Rose Red Homestead and thankful for that trick because the last one of the last videos that I vacuum sealed, I was doing it with the ring on, with the ring attachment on because I was having such a hard time with the lids going on correctly into the vacuum sealer attachment. So long story short, you can flip another lid upside down and that holds everything in place securely. So I am just finishing this up with a wide mouth pint jar. And that is one that I keep on my countertop so that I can fresh grind coffee for our espresso when we make espresso. This is another snack that I just remembered. We've got the dried banana chips and these are a house favorite every month. I buy three bags of this and every month we eat all three bags pretty quickly. Oh, hey, you should just make those. They're real easy. And I should, but I'm not going to because I make a lot of stuff and I just surely don't have time for that. So uh, I just buy them from Azure and it works out really well for us. We just buy three bags every month and it's a nice little treat a nice little whole foods snack for us that we can grab and take to the lake or we can just have as a quick snack between meals. Right here is coconut palm sugar. This is what we like to use to sprinkle on our oatmeal or to put in our coffee. So that is my countertop container and then I keep another jar of it that I refill from time to time with a five pound bag of uh, coconut palm sugar in my cabinet. Uh, but for the countertop, I just use that cute little red and white jar for our sugar jar. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Let's go over real quickly everything that I restocked. So we have our real salt. We have our Thompson raisins. We have our oiled raisins, both organic. We've got cranberries, dried apples, coconut palm sugar. We've got our sushi grain rice. We also have popping corn as well as plain corn that I like to use to make cornmeal so that I can have cornbread. We've got wheat flour, all-purpose flour, as well as black lentils, coffee, a big old container of, yep, yeah, those are the black lentils, coffee. We've got the sugar, organic raw cane sugar, as well as barley flakes, the nine grain flakes, uh, back there was oatmeal. This is the nine grain mix. And then we also have the soft white wheat, the hard red wheat, and the hard white wheat. These are all of my bread and cake baking whole wheat berries that I like to grind up and use. You can see the slight difference between the soft white wheat and the hard red wheat, as well as the hard white wheat. But thank you guys so much for watching this far. Give this video a like, that is a thumbs up. Until next time, I hope you all have a blessed day. Bye.